Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another meal prep slash batch cooking video. So I am excited for this meal prep. This is a fairly large meal prep again and there are a lot of amazing recipes in here to hopefully motivate you and inspire you to get in the kitchen and start cooking. Let's jump in to the kitchen and see what we're cooking this week. All right, so like most weeks, we are gonna start off with the berries. I like to soak my berries in vinegar water. I just throw maybe a couple tablespoons of vinegar. I let them soak in there for around 10 minutes. I do rinse them afterwards to get the vinegar off, and then I store them in a container after I let them dry for a little while with a paper towel so that we'll soak up the rest of the moisture. Next up, we're just going to be making plain old chorizo and eggs. Super delicious. I get my chorizo at Sprouts. There are the macros for those. And this chorizo that I buy at Sprouts, in my opinion, is the best chorizo that I can find. So I just cook it up in that pan. And then when it's all finished, I don't drain it or anything. I throw the eggs in there just like that. I tossed in there probably around 12 eggs you can do as many eggs as you want and i just stirred that all together made sure that the eggs were fully cooked and that is the end result this is a delicious protein packed full of fat breakfast that probably everybody in the house will love next up we are going to be making peanut butter chocolate chip muffins Oh my goodness, these were delicious. This is a brand new recipe. I'll have it linked in the description box below. But I did put in there one and a half cups of almond flour, one teaspoon of baking powder. It calls for a teaspoon of cinnamon. I did not put it in there. Um, a third cup of sweetener of choice, keto friendly, obviously. Three eggs. It calls for one tablespoon of sugar-free chocolate chips. I used two. And then a fourth a cup of peanut butter and a third of cup of heavy whipping cream. I just mixed it all together. And as you see, I did get my muffin tin ready with my silicone muffin liners. Then I just evenly distributed the batter between every single one of the muffin liners. Again, this will be in the description box below. My pickiest of pickiest kids even love these muffins. They were delicious. They were not dry, they were moist, they were so good. I did preheat my oven to 400 degrees and we left them in the oven for around 20 minutes. They came out perfect. Look how beautiful they are. Sometimes with keto desserts, you don't know for sure how well they're gonna rise, but these rose so well and these, again, I can't say it enough, they were really good. Definitely give these a try. Next up, we are shooting for easy peasy when it comes to lunches this week. So we're just gonna do a simple, simple tuna salad. I put two cans of tuna in that container, and then I like to break up the tuna before I add the rest of the ingredients. I did add a little bit of salt. I like to add equal amounts of sour cream and mayonnaise. I think it just gives it really good flavor. And I did add a little bit of sriracha. Anybody that's watched my channel knows how much I love sriracha. Just gave it a good mix. And that is another protein packed meal that will keep you full for quite some time. Proteins and fats are all in there. So delicious, and it gives it a little bit of kick with that sriracha. <laughs> so next up, I'm going to cut up some vegetables. I'm just cutting up an entire cabbage and some Brussels sprouts, and then I'm going to split the cabbage in half and the Brussels sprouts in half, and I'm going to leave half for soup that I'm going to make for next week. I'm going to save those vegetables for next week. I'll freeze them. And then the other half I am going to cook up in a pan with some bacon. So delicious. So this is the cabbage and Brussels sprouts that I'm going to cook up in a pan with bacon. And I'm going to use bacon grease to cook those up in. So delicious. And then that is the bag that I'm going to throw in the freezer and save that for next week because I'm going to make some soup with that. Then... 
I threw in there, I would say probably like six pieces of bacon. I cut them up into small pieces. Once the bacon was cooked up just a little bit, I did throw in the vegetables and I cooked it all together. That's a pretty good sized pan, so I did make quite a bit of vegetables, enough to hopefully last for the week. Threw the lid on there, let the vegetables get a little bit tender. I did throw in there a little bit of salt, as well as some pepper. And then that was the end result. We have plenty of vegetables to last for probably the whole week because it would, as far as cabbage and Brussels sprouts go, it's probably just going to be Oscar and I that eat this. So again, there will definitely be plenty for the whole week. So good, so delicious with that bacon. Next up, we're gonna be cooking up some sausage and hot dogs in the air fryer. So those are those. Teton hot dogs that I've been getting at Costco. So delicious and such clean ingredients. I just tossed all of them in my air fryer basket. And then I just cooked them in there around 400 degrees for about seven minutes. Once the seven minutes is up, I flip them and then I put them back in for around four more minutes. They are so good. They come out perfect every single time. And this is such a great thing to meal prep because I feel like these reheat well and you could always throw them back in the air fryer to warm them up. Next up, I am going to be making this pork butt roast. This is, I believe it was over 18 pounds. I'm going to cook it up in my roaster oven here. So my local grocery store, it's called Fry's here. You guys may know it as Kroger. They had these on sale for 99 cents a pound. So we picked one of these up because you can't really pass that up. The bottom of these do have a lot of fat. I can't handle all that fat, so I do cut that off. I know a lot of people are probably shaking your heads right now because you love that part of it, but I personally don't. So I'm gonna season them up with salt, pepper, garlic powder, and some oregano. And I just did one tablespoon of each one except for the pepper, and I did about a half a tablespoon of that. Then I am going to throw in some bone broth. I'm gonna use this kettle and fire bone broth, and this will be linked in the description box below if you guys wanna give this a try. Clean ingredients, everything is made from grass-fed beef and bones. So if you wanna check it out, again, the link will be in the description box below. But I am going to throw the beef bone broth in first, and then we're gonna throw the seasonings on top. I do eventually go in with even more seasonings, you'll see here in a minute. <laughs> My beautiful daughter is again helping me out, but I'm gonna go in there with some Tony's seasoning as well. Again, like I always say, don't ever be afraid to season your food. It's what gives it the flavor, it's so good. And then we are just gonna give this a nice massage. And that is what that beautiful pork butt look like after we were done massaging all that in and that is the finished product once it was all finished I shredded it up and it made a ton of me a ton but whatever we don't eat I will freeze and I didn't show this part but I did cook this on about 200 degrees and we started it in the evening and we let it cook all through the night and it was so moist so tender and so delicious we'll be freezing a lot of this though so next on the list is I am going to freeze three one pound bags of this hamburger meat and then two pounds of it I'm going to leave out because I'm gonna use it for recipes. As you see, I'm using my food scale because I'm going to get them in exact one pounders. And then I did flatten them out because they sit in your freezer so much easier. And then the last two pounds I am going to cook up in a pan and we are going to be making um, lasagna it, with one pound of it. Then the second pound of it, I'm just gonna put in the refrigerator and people can eat it however they like. A lot of times they just eat it plain, throw a little cheese on there and they are good. So I'm going to prepare the meat for the lasagna. I'm gonna use that Rayo's marinara sauce. There are the macros if you are interested, but I'm gonna throw in there around 
three-fourths cup of marinara sauce. I don't want it to be too saucy, plus I don't want it to have too many carbs. So that was a half a cup that I just threw in right there, and then I do end up adding another around a fourth a cup. And I think that was just perfect. It was just right. It wasn't too much and it wasn't too little as far as the marinara sauce. So I just gave that a stir. And then once the meat is ready, and I do let that kind of simmer a little bit to get the marinara sauce all nice and warm in there as well. I'm going to start preparing our noodles. So I threw in there two eight ounce packages of cream cheese. I'm throwing in there four eggs black pepper, garlic powder, Parmesan cheese, and I will have this recipe linked in the description box below. This recipe is actually going to be called Where's the Crust Pizza. I know it sounds like it's not going to fit lasagna, but it's actually perfect for the lasagna noodles. I go in with my hand mixer and I mix that up really, really well. And I do scrape the sides because I just want to make sure everything is mixed nicely. I just greased my dish with a little bit of avocado oil and I took half of that cream cheese batter and I'm going to bake that in that dish first. And then I preheated my oven to 350 degrees. And when that is finished, I am going to just kind of slice that into pieces. So I sliced it into about eight pieces and I you have to kind of carefully dig the first one out. So if you notice, I was kind of careful with the first one because the first piece is the hardest to get out. And I did put some parchment paper over there and I'm just going to set our noodles on the parchment paper and then I'm going to bake the rest of that batter and once the second batch is done we aren't even going to take that one out of the pan what we're going to do is we're going to take half of our meat mixture and we're going to spread it out over the bottom of the um, noodles and then we are also going to go in with cottage cheese because I'm a cottage cheese girl because our family doesn't like ricotta. So I am going to throw in there around three-fourths cup of cottage cheese. And then I'm going to spread the cottage cheese out over the meat mixture. Then we're going to go in with two different kinds of cheeses. So the first one I'm going to go in with this Mexican style cheese and I'm going to throw in half of an eight ounce bag of that and then I'm also going to put in there some mozzarella cheese and I did about a half a cup of that then we are going to put our noodles on top of that very first layer and we are going to layer the second layer the exact same way that we did the first layer, starting with the meat mixture, then the cottage cheese, and then the cheese. Then we're just gonna put that back in the oven and I just baked it until the cheese on the top was melted and bubbly. And it is so good. This is the biggest hit in our family. So a lot of you guys have asked me how many servings a casserole that size would serve. That would be eight servings right there. If you guys haven't tried this recipe, definitely give it a try. It is so good. It won't let you down. Next up, I am going to be making some fat head dough pizza crusts, but I'm not going to make pizza. I'm just going to prepare personalized pizza crusts so that way if anybody wants them during the week, they're easy peasy to grab and just create on their own. So that was seven cups of shredded mozzarella cheese that I melted in the microwave, three cups of almond flour, two eggs, two teaspoons of baking powder, two teaspoons of xanthan gum, a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, and a teaspoon of garlic powder. I did double this batch so that way I could make eight personalized pizza crusts. This recipe will be in the description box below if you are interested. So I stirred it as well as I could with the spoon and then I went in with my hands. My hands were a little bit wet because if you wet your hand, the dough will not stick to your hands. However, if you don't work quick enough, you might not want to double the batch. You might want to just make one batch at a time. 
So I'm cutting this dough into eight different pieces because like I said, I want to make eight personalized little pizza crusts. And I don't know, this is the easiest way that I have found to make the crust as evenly as I possibly can because I'm not going to whip out my um, food scale for that. But once I have them into eight pieces, I just kind of mold them into a ball shape and then I just manipulate it into its own little pizza crust. I try to make it as round as I possibly can and you can make them as thin or as thick as you want as far as your pizza crust goes. And I like to take the edges and just kind of curl the edges up a little bit so that way I don't know, for one, I think it looks a little better, and for two, I feel like your stuffing is gonna stay in there better, but I preheated my oven to 400 degrees, and I'm just going to place the pizza crust in there and let them cook for around eight to 10 minutes, and then I'm gonna work on the rest of those, but this is what it looks like. These I actually cooked a little bit too long. You don't really wanna cook them that long. That is what you really want them to look like. Um, although the ones that I did cook too long, there's nothing wrong with them. They're still edible. We still ate them, but um, as far as freezing them, I like to keep them looking a little bit more like that. Then when we freeze them, I like to wrap them in parchment paper so they don't stick together. And, and I just slide those little stinkers right in a freezer bag. I do about four per bag. Although two of those got eaten before I could even get them into the bag, but that's good because you know it's good then. <laughs> All right, last but definitely not least, we are going to be making some keto blonde brownies. So the first thing I am putting in that bowl is three-fourths cup of monk fruit, and I did use the golden monk fruit. Next up, I am going to put in there one-fourth cup of coconut flour as well as one tablespoon of coconut flour. I did give it a little shake of salt, three-fourths tablespoon of baking powder, a fourth a teaspoon xanthan gum, a half a cup of unsweetened coconut, a half a cup of walnuts, and then a half a cup of Lily's chocolate chips. Doesn't that already sound delicious? <laughs> this is a brand new recipe. This will be in the description box below as well. I did put in there two eggs, one teaspoon of vanilla, one tablespoon of heavy whipping cream, and then it also calls for five tablespoons of melted butter. And then I mix all of that up then I just greased an 8 by 8 inch pan with butter and I poured the batter into the baking dish. The batter was a little bit dry so it wasn't even really like pouring. It was more like dumping. And then I just went in with my hands and I kind of spread the dough all over the bottom of that pan because I feel like it did a lot better job than trying to do it with the spoon. But I did preheat the oven to 350 degrees and it says to bake these for 18 minutes. My oven took a lot longer than that. I think it probably would have been good around 20, 25 minutes. I did end up leaving them in a little bit too long. And these were super, super good. To be honest with you, they were a little bit dry in my opinion, but oh my golly, the taste was so good. And I think the only reason they may have been a little bit dry is because I think I left them in the oven a little bit too long. But another winner in my book, this recipe is delicious. And don't forget, the recipes will be in the description box below. There'll be links so that way you can click on them and check them out for yourself. All right, so that concludes this week's meal prep. If you guys like this type of video, if you could do me a favor and smash that like button, as well as if you are not yet part of my Simply Misty family, go ahead and smash that subscribe button as well because I would love to have you as part of my YouTube family. Don't forget to leave a comment down below or tag me on Instagram. I'll leave my Instagram in the description box below if you want to go follow me there. But let me know what you're meal prepping. Let me know if you tried any of these recipes. Let me know what you think. I'm always interested to see what you guys think of these recipes because everybody's taste buds are different. Also, I love to see what you guys are meal prepping because you guys give me ideas as well. But like always, I really truly hope... 
that this video was inspirational and motivational for you to jump in the kitchen and start meal prepping for yourself and your family. It really truly is a lifesaver during the week. Saves time, saves money, and it really truly does give you your freedom back in the evenings. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate every single one of you guys. And don't forget to go out there and make today even better than yesterday. And I will talk to you in my next video. Bye. On my own, but I don't know why you hit the road, but you don't realize I'm on the back when you're around. I won't think twice